what do we mean uh, by equilibrium? Equilibrium is very important um, when discussing any reaction, but it's particularly relevant when we're talking about acidity. So, for example, if we look at some very strong bases, it's naturally assumed that virtually every single part of that uh, compound is converted into H plus and its conjugate base. And that is shown here in the first uh, equation. HA, which is our model acid, disproportionates into H plus and A minus. But there can also be, in the case of weaker, weaker acids, a backward reaction, where H plus and A minus come back together again to form our uh, non-dissociated HA, which is our, again our model acid. This uh, equilibrium is shortened, as you can see at the bottom part of the board, where HA is shown to be in equilibrium with the H plus and conjugate base A minus. So in other words, what this means is we have a reaction going forward where we have HA separating out into H plus and its conjugate base, and we have the reaction going backwards. And this is how it is often described. And when you see these single-headed arrows going in opposite di uh, direction, you know that what you're dealing with is a dynamic equilibrium. And that's important for a whole number of different reasons. After a certain time, the speed of the forward reaction will be the same as the backward reaction. And the concentrations of the reactions and the products will remain stable or will remain steady state. That is to say, the concentration of either the products nor the reactants will then change unless there is influence externally by varying, for example, temperature or pressure. The system is said to be therefore at equilibrium. So, this is a model reaction which would be um, applicable to not just acid base, but also to a whole number of different reactions, where we start off with two products, starting reactants, A plus B, that are converted into C and D. So again, irrespective of what reaction you're talking about, reactants, products. The equilibrium is always given as the combined concentration of products over the combined concentration of reactants. The brackets there around the C denote the concentration of C. Likewise, the same for D, A and B. So as you can see, an equilibrium constant is given by the concentration of one product multiplied by the concentration of the other product divided by the concentration of a reactant multiplied by the concentration of another reactant. Bear in mind, this equilibrium uh, is a thermodynamic property. And there's a fundamental difference between that and kinetics, which is something we may touch upon uh, in future modules. But crucially speaking, these um, are thermodynamic. And therefore, this does not relate to the kinetics or the rate of formation, but rather whether or not it is energetically more favorable or less favorable for the reaction to occur. So here, as I've said, where X is the concentration of X, K is the equilibrium constant. If K is large, as you might expect, what this means is that the reaction will give mostly products, with only small amounts of reactants remaining. Because effectively, K is just a ratiometric measure of how much product we get in comparison to how much reactant remains. However, if K is small, only a small amount of product is formed, and the majority of the compound will remain as the reactant. In the case of the dissociation of water, which I've shown you before, where you can get H plus and OH minus, which for the sake of argument is represented as A minus in this particular equation shown on the board, you can see that the equilibrium constant for this is the lysis of one concentration of acid, HA, into H plus and A minus. And so, in this particular case, we can denote the equilibrium constant for uh, this dissociation um, as, in this case, the acidity constant, or Ka. Sometimes you'll come across other equilibrium constants, uh, which are specific, for example, for complexation. And they are often given as Kd, which is the equilibrium associated with dissociation. But Ka is specifically how much of H plus is created from a given concentration of HA. The acid dissociation constant, which you will find in um, any textbooks which deal with this subject, is always given as K subscript A.
If therefore A is large, it stands to reason that HA, our acid, will be almost completely dissociated, giving a large concentration of H+. This is common in strong acids. Strong acids being H2SO4, or sulfuric acid, HCl, or hydrochloric acid, or HNO3, or nitric acid. These are all good examples of strong acids, where because Ka is so large, it is uniformly accepted that the concentration in each of these cases directly correlates to the imparted concentration of H plus in a given solution. Acids which only dissociate to a small extent are called weak acids, and these possess a small acidity constant, or Ka. A good example of these are the carboxylic acids. We'll be discussing carboxylic acids and the influences on their structure in a bit more detail in Module 3. But for the moment, hopefully you can appreciate that where we have an organic acid, such as the carboxylic acid shown in this particular case, the actual preference is largely for the formation of the acid and not dissociation to the conjugate base, or carboxylate, and the H+, which is obviously the measure of acidity. A good example of this is ethanoic acid. So this is given as CHCO2H, where the Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, considerably smaller. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.